Welcome to Pushing the Boundaries, folks. Today, we have a force of nature on the show, an inspiration for everyone who wants to create data-driven cultures. After watching Angelica present at the Big Data Expo in Amsterdam last year, and how inspired the audience was with her engaging storytelling, I knew she would be great for our Pushing the Boundaries series. Spending a decade or more teaching, Angelica is shaping and influencing our new generation of data heroes. I love her practical and pragmatic approaches to maximizing data literacy in the real world. And that's what it's about, ladies and gentlemen. It's about practical delivery results in the real world. I'll say it again, in the real world. So that's so important. And I, you know, I love people that are genuinely making a difference. So, you know, Let's find out a little bit more about Angelica, uh, her work and her mantra, which I also love. Think big, act small and scale fast. So, yeah, what a great mantra to have. You carry that with you every day. And I've, I've started using it myself. So, you know, a bit of an inf influencer here. You're influencing me as well. This is fantastic. So um, let's uh, say good morning. Welcome. Welcome, Angelica, to Pushing the Boundaries. Welcome, Sean. Thank you for having me. Thank you for oh. having me. <laughs> so great to have you here today. And again, you know, massive fan uh, working with you uh, in Amsterdam. It was an absolute joy. And seeing how you really, really engaged and got people with you uh, on, on that journey around data literacy was very inspiring for me. So uh, thank you for that. And I'm sure, you know, people today are going to going to hear some of those stories and, and hear a bit more about what you're doing uh, and hopefully start to, you know, maybe collaborate and also adopt some of those things you're talking about. So great to have Thank you, you here. yeah great yeah. to talk about my one of my most favorite topics yeah. which is data literacy for all uh, it's yeah. not uh it and it's not only uh for the netherlands but it's it's uh, it's global because everybody needs to have a certain level in data literacy skill set uh, uh, and that can vary a lot Absolutely. And we're going to find out a bit more in a moment. And um, what I'm particularly interested in is just a little bit about you, Angelica. Tell me a little bit about you. What, 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 what are you up to? What's your, what's your hobbies? What's my hobbies? Oh, I have I have some uh, uh, when I have the time, actually. Huh? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm married. You can see my children behind me uh, yeah. on the on the wall. Uh, we have a big garden, a piece of land uh, about 10 minutes drive from my home where we grew veggies and fruits and uh, have a lot of fun uh, in working uh, with the family there. Uh, Nala, our pup, she's 13 weeks old now and uh, I, I will, I'm sending you all the time those, uh, those pictures. Uh, is growing <laughs> rapidly. She is 14 kilos now. She was uh, uh, a lot less uh, when we got her. She is uh, 40 centimeters high and she was 24. Uh, so yeah. phew, it's, uh, it's growing like, uh, like a Great. crazy. Crazy, crazy girl, and she is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed some of the pics where she's destroying your vegetables and your plants in your garden. Uh, oh it, yes, it doesn't. My stop poor little away. garden. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I hope uh, I hope uh, she, that uh, that that will stop uh, at one yeah. moment. Uh, uh, mm. Uh, further, I, I'm a diver. I'm a scuba diver as well. Uh, yeah. I don't teach scuba diving anymore. I used to yeah. teach that. I think about thirty years. Uh -huh. um i i was the old-fashioned diver and went into yeah. the new world of diving uh, the old way of the uh, data and the new world yeah. of data well it's a, it's 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 a, it's a grow again um yeah. and i teach i think i i, I have uh, more than 500 600 students delivered with a certification for diving safe diving wow. of course and um uh, i love diving now only in the beautiful waters like mexico oh. or egypt or whatever to make beautiful pictures that's amazing and to see the amazing. beautiful uh, and, yeah and don't you do something with furniture as well is that right or, or? yeah i'm yeah. i'm uh, well my hands are, are are sometimes a little bit stiff but you know uh, yeah. uh, because uh, i used to work hard with the uh, wood and make mm. furniture or repair things in the house and uh, uh well we have a porch a veranda at yeah. our house i build it myself with a friend and uh, oh. no iron connectors just wood connections which i like <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so I, I'm a firm believer that uh, you know people you work with, uh, you want to know a bit about them. You know, they're, they're people, and uh, you know uh, you want to work with lovely, great people. And ha hearing some of those sort of personal stories and what you do and where you've been is really important. A lot of people forget that in the workplace, don't they? Yeah. So yeah, um, they do. I think it's great, yeah, great for our audience to hear a little bit more about you. You know, so that's great. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's yeah, what I always try to do. Not even, uh, not only as a uh, as a manager education who is selling mm. her projects and all these kind of things, but yeah. you know, I'm very, I'm very interested in people and coaching people uh, uh, in 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 a manner that they can grow as an individual and help uh, organizations to grow as well. So yeah. the human impact of everything is 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 not only based on data literacy, but also on personal skill sets and soft skills to yeah. to. Uh, yeah, to get to get everything in place. So that's yeah. uh, I'm a people manager, and I, yeah. I I will never change that. I think. No. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Me. And uh, yeah. let, let's start talking a bit about that. then. so, uh, your mantra. I've got to start here. Really, um, your think big, act small, scale fast. What, yeah. So tell me about that. Well, it, it's it started uh, about. You know, I was working with data already for a long time. We made statistical uh, reports at the governmental organization where I worked for almost 25 years. And um, um, the name then was not BI or data and analytics. It was a management information system. Uh, And we made uh, this beautiful A4 uh, reports uh, with uh, the numbers of visitor that would come to the office or whatever. Uh, so I was working with data already a long time. And uh, uh, then I started to get acquainted with uh, ClickView 7, which is a long, long time ago. And actually, when we uh, when we got it into the uh, to, uh, to UWV where I worked, I, I thought, man, this is something really, really big. And, and wow, uh, I can make reports within that. Uh, not realizing then at the moment that everybody do is, was doing the same. So we had a kind of wild grow um, and uh, everybody was doing their own thing in their own way, in their own style, downloading ClickView, downloading this and uh, or asking for licenses uh, uh, at the facility manager. Uh, uh, but And then we found out that we need to structure it. So mm-hmm. And we structured it by centralization uh, and putting all the people together in a team and start from there with standard procedures, one view. And there we realized that you you can deliver with a big bang scenario. You can. But if we will take one year in developing a beautiful dashboard and some some, uh, nice uh, reports behind it, uh, um, the wish after a year is completely different than when you started. So you have to start all over again. So it's better to start waterfall is at the beginning making your plan setting up your architecture making the connections but then use incremental sprints yeah. small sprints small blocks and yeah. from there you can continue and that's where my phrase is coming from think yes. big have the dot on the horizon know what you want to do for your organization because i be truly believe that all organization goals needs to be the base of uh, your data and analytics environment and from there make the small spins but do it rapidly because yeah, they want it absolutely I, I agree with you entirely and you know yeah. that agile methodology you know from going around the world working with uh, you know different customers in different industries different countries um absolutely using that incremental approach the most successful are using that and that agile methodology yeah. Uh, so some great advice, isn't it? If people don't understand yeah. and know about agile methodology um, and your mantra, then go, go find out because it's, it's a great yeah. way to work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and actually, what I, what I see in in practice as well is that yeah. we uh, we are so good in selling projects. We are so good in building beautiful graphs, beautiful tables, beautiful things in the dashboards that find. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know how you say that in English, but that you can't see the forest to the trees. Yeah, can't see wood uh, trees. That's yeah. correct. So we make so many graphs because we are so excited about the tools that yeah. that that we can make beautiful things. But then on the other side, uh, we forget that people need to look at the graphs, work with the graphs, and get into action. And the action yeah. part is the most difficult one. And that's yeah. the that's the change within an organization. They have to learn to work with data, with the insights. To, yeah. to 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 get more efficiency or effectivity uh, yeah. to get more smarter and get more money uh, absolutely hundred percent and that, and that, that yeah. data literacy piece traditionally often overlooked in projects when they're introducing technology especially analytics 
Um, and I think you know what you're doing uh, around data literacy. You're providing uh, that uh, that that there's a gap in the market. You're providing that uh, vital yeah. bit. I think, and organisations are really waking up, aren't they, to to the the, the power of data literacy and how it shifts outcomes in organisations. So yeah. you know, tell me tell me a little bit about how how you got into data literacy. Well, um, hmm. uh, about. I'm a late blower, I, I think you called it. I, I blossom uh, in, at a later age. Uh, so yeah. I started studying uh, at the University of Applied Sciences, um, I think back in 2004. Yeah. Uh, I thought, well, I work in this level, but actually I want this paper. Huh? I want yeah. this diploma. And uh, I started studying and actually it was the it was the time of my life. I still have contact with uh, with all those uh, uh, people uh, there in from my classes where I worked with, and we still chat and have share ideas. And in my last year, um, uh, in my last semester, actually at the, at the university, I uh, was writing my thesis. I was doing a semester myself in project management, and I was a teacher because they asked me if I could help the students learn to work with ClickView. Uh -huh. And from there it grew uh -huh. that I started to be a teacher um, uh, for the minor BI and analytics. And uh, uh, that's how I got started. And I like what I do. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and you've been doing it for how many years? <laughs> how many years have you been uh, doing it for? Almost, almost 13 years now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I do that's it beside good. my job. I do it beside yeah. my job. So yeah. uh, I'm and a manager education now at Two Focus, yeah. uh, where I started recently, uh, and there I can set up the data literacy part as well. And uh, I teach in the evenings uh, uh, at the university. Oh, that's great, and uh, yeah, in inspiring all, all our yeah our, our next generation of uh, of data yeah. people. That's brilliant. And yeah. what sort of success have you seen? Do you follow up with the students? You know, are they getting yeah. jobs in data? How, how do you how do you find their results? Um, well, I have uh, this database which I uh, and I collected all uh, the numbers that I gave yeah. for their assignments. Uh, yeah. But I also know if a student is working in the BI work field, and I think I believe about yeah. thirty-four or thirty-five percent of my students is working actually in the data analytics world. Right. So that's right. cool. That's really cool. And I always try to get in to stay in touch, you know. And yeah. they, I always tell them, well, who uh, connect me with me uh, in LinkedIn and or share your ideas if you need my help just call me and uh well that's that's warm contacts and i i really like that yeah that's absolutely brilliant and what about the organizations yeah. you work with um are you finding some uh, really great results from from working with organizations on data i know you've done, done some this week i saw them on linkedin uh yeah. how's it landing uh, it was it was really fantastic uh, it, it was mind-blowing uh, good uh yeah. i I felt so energetic uh, yeah. after the basic, the data literacy basics yeah. is always a, a, a thing, you know, I can use my materials yeah. from school because I have found, I have all the content. So I, I, I switch that and, uh, you know, I always keep up the uh, um, with the latest trends or I will go to have the bad visualizations. And if you are data literate, you, you will see that on the spot. Um, uh, and uh, so I always start my courses with the basics workshop. And from yeah. there, you can go into modules uh, to learn about strategy, about data strategy, about uh, BI projects. Why is it so different than a normal project? Yeah. Or how do you write a BI business case? Because I'm a firm believer as well that you should write, even though it could be a small business case, but think of the costs and the yeah. values that you can gain. So to have a look yeah. at your investment. So. Great, 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 great two days. I I was very excited. <laughs> I, I felt the energy, you know, just from how people write things. And uh, again, yeah. that's storytelling, isn't it? I yeah. saw the slide where you're using. And first thing I noticed straight away was just how exciting, you, you, you know, when we talk about technology and data, data literacy, you know, you know it, could, it could be made to be pretty dull, actually, but you made it feel and look exciting. And I think, you know, yeah. half the battle is getting people engaged, isn't it? Uh, and wanting yeah. to learn and, and do more, so uh, I loved loved uh, how you were, the energy that was coming across uh, in those posts. And hopefully, yeah. you know, people will be looking at that and thinking, you know what, we, we need a bit of that. Um, and I'm a firm believer personally of of creating, you know, real excitement and energy around data in an organisation. 
because uh, it's so yeah. important. So well done um, and lovely, lovely to see a lot of that work uh, coming through. So uh, great stuff. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, and what I find most mostly is that I, I I have the sheets, and then I have a big image, of course, and then I have yeah. some some lines to keep me reminded that uh, oh, you have to tell this. But every uh, I tell stories from my from my experience, yeah. and and uh, how you can help and how you can get into uh, into action to 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 become data literate. And and I'm yeah. not saying that people are not data literate; they are not illiterate; they yeah. are actually already on 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 a, on a, on a special uh, uh how do you get a level but mm. you know they you have to continue to to improve yourself or to improve your yeah. organization and uh, i love i love that by telling just the stories around my experience yeah. uh, and that helps yeah. yeah and people remember the stories don't they and um yeah. you know that's it's vital it's not just about textbook this is about experience real life stories uh, people that are going to go away and think do you know what? I'm always going to remember that. A um, bit like I remembered what you were doing uh, oh, a year ago. You know, I see a lot of presentations, yeah. a lot of people, you know, and you remember it. So I think you're absolutely right. Bringing it to life uh, is is yeah. absolutely vital. But yeah. on the other side, you know, we talked about great stuff happening. But what about lessons learned? Anything that you think is really important? Don't fall into that trap, or anything that you maybe have uh, done. Think, oh, we should have done that. You know. Yeah. Well. Well. I think that's a story uh, also from uh, uh, UWV where we, um, you know, I was this nutcase, this champion, because I used to be a champion just like you uh, at UWV. And uh, I was running around with my laptop under my arm, running around in the big organization uh, uh, to show what we could do for, for teams or departments or units. And... Uh, uh, and then I thought, okay, well, if we do this for you, you know, you will save time and blah, blah, blah. And so once I, I, I got into a, a department and uh, uh, I collected some data and made some reports and I asked uh, the people um, if we would prepare this for you. So if you could work from a basic, from a basis and create your own visualizations in yeah. ClickView, uh, how would that sound to you? And the, the remark that I got was, but I like to work with Excel and Access. And uh, well, I told them, but you have more time to analyze and advise your management. And, and they told me, well, analyze, I don't know. Um, that's, that's kind of difficult. My manager can do it in himself. And that was the moment that I realized that data and analytics projects are a big, big, big change. And yeah. that you have to guide your people, uh, mm. your people, to work with insights created from data, because you can deliver it. I, we had a conversation about it yesterday as well. Okay, mm. so what you do? Okay, you tell the people the dashboard is ready. Go, work with it. But that's not the way. You have to take them by the hand, reach the helping hand, show them how it works, mm. show them the use cases that you can answer, and from there let them go. Easily, yeah. but always. So implementation in BI and projects is so tremendously important. Yeah. And I find that that is forgotten too many times. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, yeah, underestimating that change process of getting people to do new things, uh, leaving traditional things and cultures and ways of working behind. Yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right. Too often ignored. Yeah. Um, and it's the... Not you can't always write these things down very well on, on you know on a project plan, but but actually it's the human side, isn't it, around leadership in an organisation, whether you're a supervisor, a colleague, or you know a senior executive, it's about all of you really understanding people and about how do you bring people and technology together to be able to do new different and exciting things that transformation piece really so lovely lesson uh, uh si very yeah. simple example but, but yeah. actually people don't you know don't underestimate the change process isn't it yeah, yeah. and that's that's actually also the human impact is it mm. can be in very ways but you know you have those pillars and and, and one of them is the implementation factor that, mm. that they have to learn to look and i can i can believe that in the beginning, we will work with some easy graphs yeah. and tables. And from there, yeah. you can grow into the more difficult graphs like scatter plots, like box plots, like histograms. 
because yesterday I was also talking about, you know, what's the difference between average, what's the difference, what's mode and what's median. And they were looking at me and said, I never realized yeah. that you can look at this way as well. So that's cool, actually. Yeah. And, yeah. Th and then my heart jumps out and I'm <laughs> then I get so happy and you know like uh, 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 then I know my job my job is good you know and I love yeah. to to bring information to people that's my yeah. why as Simon Sinek would say yeah and just just thinking what you were saying there um, you know the practical side of data literacy is you know looking at that data knowing you know is is something significant Yes or no? You know, is is the data you're looking at that spike or the trend uh, or the difference between this year, last year? Is it a significant difference? And all of those data literacy skills are absolutely vital for people to truly uh, read, write, argue, work with, uh, create hypotheses, uh, and, and change business through evidence-based sort of decision making. So those practical yeah. skills that you're teaching people uh, are fundamental. And um, I, sorry, I had to start. My kid I, I is coming that. in. <laughs> a little clap on the shoulder saying, mom, mom. Um, sometimes you, <laughs> the line is, sometimes you, you, uh, I lose you uh, in the sound. Uh, so, and Nala is below my feet now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens every time. We had, we had Jordan Morrow on and he was went to rescue his child minding and his, 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 his well, child. Uh, so we, we've yeah. had uh, all sorts. So that's good. I, I love it. But it's human. You know, it's, <laughs> it's the world we live in these days, isn't it? So it's great. Yeah, um, he just came from school. You know, here in Holland, uh, uh, we are starting to get back to school again. I don't know how yeah. it is in England. Uh, but And my son is uh, having his final exams in a few days. So he, oh. he's preparing himself. So it's very exciting for him. Good, so I get luck. it. Good luck to him. And uh, yeah, it's slowly, slowly coming back in the UK. But uh, it, it's yeah. pretty slow. Uh, yeah, but, it's yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just um, think, think about moving on here. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed uh, Maria Sandorova on about women in tech. Um, and just about the inspiration, you know, regardless of uh, a sex, she brings inspiration to everyone, but, but particularly around encouraging new students, and new people uh, into tech, women in particular. Um, that was, uh, you know, it's great, to, great to hear how how they've done it and the lessons that they, you know, great people have, have have done to be able to support more of that. Um, have you seen that much diversity in your enrolled students for you know for people coming into uh, the business? Unfortunately, I mm. I do not have any woman in my class now. Only one, mm. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but usually, I have some women in my class, and I try to yeah. to move them to. Uh, well, to, to work in data or even in IT related jobs like uh, software engineering or, or all those kind of things. I'm not a tech, I'm not a real mm. techie, I think. I, I know I can talk about technology trends and I know how to program a little. Uh, that's not my core. Mm. I don't, uh, I started out uh, a few years ago as a programmer as well, you know, making beautiful click few reports and then I was struggling too much. Uh, and mm. I thought, well, this is not this is not it. So I have to, you know, I like to work more with the workshops, data literacy, yeah. uh, ideas. I have ideas mm. and I share them. And uh, well, we have uh, one idea coming up, right? Yeah. And uh, that's my innovative part uh, uh, that I always try to look a little bit further than the boundaries that are set. Yeah. And how do you think, um, you know, looking a bit further, how, how do you think we can encourage uh, more women to be inspired to take a tech career and, and join join more of your classes. Um, yeah. You know, we, we need more inclusion, diversity in the world, don't we, to make high performing organisations yeah. and teams. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, so what, I what truly do we do? Believe that. Mm. Yeah. Well. Uh, anyway, it's uh, women. Please, please follow the classes and be become a, a, a software engineer or a, a data literacy specialist, or even a, a, a ETL specialist yeah. or whatever. I have yeah. seen many women in my in my career, of course, also working in ETL, also working on the dashboard side, yeah. but the level is, is, is still like this. Yeah. Like, and uh, uh, I hope this pushing the boundary session will help. Mm. I, about two years ago, I was interviewed also for an article, Women in Tech, it's which oh, is yeah. in English. I, I think it's also on my profile yeah. uh, on LinkedIn. But, you know, it's very important that we have also women in our work field. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, yeah. 
Yeah. I encourage anyone to reach out and uh, to have a look at what you're doing and how they can get on your your stuff that you do. Um, yeah. And and thank you for uh, you know again picking up picking up the gauntlet and supporting those things. Um, mm -hmm. And if you think about the the future about where it's where it's all going, data literacy. What do you think it holds? You know, what 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 next for data literacy? I mean, it's in its infancy around at scale in organizations where do, where do you think it's going um i think uh, still now as i say in my presentations it's a desired skill mm. it's until now it's still desired oh yeah we have data we have to do something about it but now even in this covid 19 time frame yeah. uh, we can see that uh, data uh, data working with data is still coming up i see everywhere this 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 dashboards popping up uh, i'm not yeah. i'm not publishing by the way because i have a dashboard of course but it's not the truth where we are looking at we are looking through a keyhole to we it's not reality um but i think it's 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 um I think the importance of the data mm. literacy skill set, and maybe we have to define it a little bit more, like uh, data literacy. Maybe the the term is a little bit too uh, mm. too cloudy, you know. Mm. Uh, but it's the term data literacy sticks. That's for sure. Mm. It's 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 a good term. Uh, but yeah. um, I think in in from 2021 2022, yeah. it's a it's a it's a must have skill set. You yeah. have to have a certain level of and I truly believe that you don't have to be a data scientist on top. Uh, so, mm. because everybody in this informational pyramid uh, from statistical information, technical information, operational in, uh, info has his own uh, skill set. And that's where you have to work on. So, like the session I had yesterday and the day before yesterday was about strategy, about more organizational uh, way of looking at your organization and how you. Mm can do uh, the move uh, to, to, to become a data literate organization um, from more, and that I, I told them as well, do you know the difference between average, mode, and median? And they were looking, and so maybe a basic course of statistical information would be also good. So make uh, good small components and grow, but I I think it, 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 it will be a, uh, not a desired skill anymore, but it will, go Essential. flip over like a yeah, yeah. like a mandatory skill set yes yeah that's a great that's a great point and uh, i think anyone who's looking to you know recruit and develop uh, and be competitive i guess in the world will start taking that advice and start making it a critical requirement yeah. for people's roles yeah. Uh, yeah. across any industry um and uh, understand your part uh, maybe or, or influencing part of the global click data literacy program working with Jordan, Jordan Morrow, I understand, is that correct? Yes, uh, yes it, it, it will come, I think, in a few weeks. Uh, but we had a very, very nice conversation yesterday uh, evening. I was in my car driving from, <laughs> I, I think, about 150 kilometers uh, from my home where I was working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, I couldn't get it on the car kit, so I just put my car aside the road and uh, yeah. had a meeting with Jordan and with Susie from the Data Literacy Project uh, organization. And fantastic. Yeah. So we definitely will work together, and you know, and I don't even think small uh, uh, because yeah. this story needs to be told globally. So yeah. if somebody wants me come to uh, Israel or to Canada or to Greece, I will come and tell the story about data literacy because I think it's so important that we mm. uh, have to have those practical bits and bytes that I can yeah. deliver as a lecturer, uh, yeah. but I can do it also from a commercial perspective. Yeah. So yes, come please. And I'm yeah. really pleased you're part of that. You bring a huge passion. Uh, I'm sure you bring a huge passion to the program. So uh, looking I'm forward like to you, seeing Sean. like you. you <laughs> 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 um, but um, yeah, that's really good. And you know, thinking about um, thinking about what you're doing in your new role. Uh, obviously, you recently started and to focus. Fantastic! Congratulations. Uh, how's it been? You, how's it? Because obviously, new place, new new people. How's it been for you? Oh, you can see my smile on my face. It, it. Uh, I, yeah. I, I spoke to Dave yesterday evening when I got back uh, from yeah. uh, from my uh, from my uh, training. Uh, I said, I told him it's it feels like a warm bath. Yeah. And I feel embraced, you know, and uh, uh, I can do my thing, uh, yeah. making the materials. We are going to be, uh, you know, we the website is ready. I think in in next week we are working so tremendously hard to write all the. Uh, the bits and parts because you have to write you can't 
make long stories. I like to tell long stories, uh, but you, we have to shorten them a little bit. But the yeah. website will be ready next week and everybody yeah. can have a look at it. We will have a press release. I hope this will help as well. Uh, just yeah. to to get more engaged with with the the, the world around us uh, and and deliver our data literacy workshops from basics yeah. basics to the more detailed like how do I create visualizations in the best yeah. way for my organization so and everything in the middle and Sounds I love like it I'm I'm yeah. so happy I'm so happy yeah that's great they they yeah. seem like they uh, they do some great stuff so uh, uh, well done and congrats. Hi there. <laughs> ah, that's my that's my beautiful son. <laughs> Photo bombing you. Yeah. yeah. So I have to leave that in. See you, see you soon. Good luck on the exams. Oh, good luck with your exams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Uh, do you know? I think as it's a metaphor for for ending the ending the interview, isn't it? Someone leaves leaves the leaves the room. So uh, I just want to. Elvis has left the building. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I want to say uh, thank you so much for being part of this today and uh, yeah. talking about you, uh, data literacy, uh, the future of data literacy, and some practical advice and tips for people, lessons learned. Yeah. I think a lot of people yeah. need that. So thank you so much. And thank I look you. forward to seeing all your stuff on LinkedIn about how it's all going. Please keep keep you know giving content that people can look at, see, be inspired with. Uh, we need more of that. Um, and uh, it's an absolute honour to talk to you. So thank you, Angelica, and uh, good luck in the new role as well. Okay, thank you so much, John, and uh, well, we will talk soon again. Oh, so absolutely. take care, and yeah. thank you so much. Okay, okay. bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.